What's up, friends of the good mood? It's Manny, and welcome to the next sweet remastered graphics on Castle with a special topic I want to discuss. That hawk right there in my team, the laser beaming hawk right there, versus my Fenrir. Who's gonna do the most damage? Different playstyles head on brawler versus a, a second line sniper or a supporter, right? Let's see who's gonna have the better chance. You see, this hawk is max level. See how quickly that phantom died? That Hawk cannot have overdrive running at this early point in the game, so he must be maxed. Otherwise, that Phantom wouldn't drop so quickly, alright? So, uh, a max level Hawk versus my max level Fenrir, and two very different playstyles. My playstyle that allows me to stand in front of the enemy the whole time and just brawl with them based on my tankiness. Um, and his playstyle that gives him the resistance bypass and this massive damage output with the laser beam and his two heavy and two light weapons doing even more damage than my two medium and one heavy weapon, right? So let's let's find out in this video who's got the bigger impact, who's got the bigger damage output uh, overall in the match. Um, and not just simply the damage output because we know the Hawk would do more in theory, but combined with the playstyles of the tank versus the second line supporter, who's gonna be the better damage dealer at this point, all right? So, and we're gonna keep each other alive. We're gonna stick together, that Hawk and I, we're gonna stick together through this match the entire time, and I'm gonna protect him as well as I can too, um, and uh, do whatever I can to keep him in the game, right? So, I was, I'm really surprised to see, uh, or I hope you guys are also really surprised to see the result of this. Uh, we have some Vortex coming there. The Hawk was lasering again against the uh, Nightingale. Did a lot of damage. Let's uh, let's see. And by the way, in the second match, I'm gonna fight with you, my Fenrir versus my own Hawk, right? Uh, in this case, I don't have a friendly Hawk with me, but I'm gonna use first my Fenrir and then the Hawk, and then we're gonna see what what does better in this case, okay? So, suppressing the enemy at long range, but I'm I'm low on accuracy now on the uh, on the nucleon on, on, on the atomizer. I have to let the weapon cool down a little. Here we go, cool down all the way. Doing full damage. And the Hawk is also gonna fire up in a second again. There he is, he's flying now. You can see he's gonna do his thing. But the enemy is not always, um, not always hittable. That's what happens all the time. When Hawks fly up, the enemies retreat behind cover because they don't want to get hit by that laser beam, right? And, um, and that's just a thing that will happen a lot when you play the Hawk. By the way, my overdrive isn't even activated yet, so I really need that to activate. I need some of the enemy team to hit me. Here, why am I seeing that Mercury? Uh, why is he not stealthed? Maybe he was using the jump unit and not his stealth jump. Maybe that was happening, I don't know. Wow, the damage of this Hawk is insane, dude. He just c connects his beam with something and his health, like instantly gone. It's so crazy. So I think his name is John. Is that not, does that not that mean John in Russian letters? Tell me if I'm correct, I'd like to hear that. Uh, because I feel like this means John, and I only know what John means in Russian, and I can't really read anything else. I kind of memorized how the letters look. So here we have Overdrive running for a second, and you see also what happens is another thing. Uh, the Nightingale has two possible targets. He has me, the Fenrir tank, or he has the Hawk. And you see what he's going, he starts to switch the target to the, Fen uh, to the, uh, to the Hawk because the Fenrir tank is not really that interesting as a target. By the way, another thing I want to show you, with a new update, now that our chuns are not stealth when they fly up. So you can see I can suppress him before he reaches his stealth. And this is why I don't have to be afraid of his damage right now, because he's gonna do very little damage, and then I drop the shield open, and he's gonna do even less damage due to that. And uh, I was basically able to survive an entire our chun flight without taking any damage due to the... Um, to the suppression I was able to apply to him before he flies up um, and activates stealth. And if you like the content, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to the channel right here and hit that notification bell to be notified for more videos. Here we have a jumping Mercury. See, the, the Mercury stealth jump works. Uh-oh. Instant lockdown by the enemy Aochun. Um, with lockdown ammo, I guess, right? Uh, but this time, the Mercury jump with the stealth jump unit. And uh, I can take him down with the Hawk here together, or just myself. Boom, there he goes. Now, I was just insta-locked by an Aochun with stealth jump, uh, with stealth. Here, needs Jazz. He's got lockdown ammo. When he starts to fly, you're instantly insta-locked. Now there is... 
Oh, that's two guys with next with nearly the same name. Smooth. This is the same clan, guys. That's why. Uh, look, he instantly locks me too. He also has insta lockdown ammo on his uh, Aochun. And I was like, well, what are the chances of two Aochuns with the same Viper setups using the same freaking lockdown ammo instantly? Because what I normally do, I see them, ah, they stealth jump, then I walk behind the car, activate my shield, and I walk behind safety. And I can't do that when I'm insta-locked. And they both had that, and I just now realized it's both clan, it, those are pre-mates. Those are squad mates, pre-mates in a squad. So of course they have the same setup in the pl same playstyle, they are doing this together. Anyways, here I'm protecting the hawk, and the only reason he doesn't die is his face shift. This is why I would also, if you have a hawk, suggest running face shift. It's the only thing that keeps you alive is somebody jumps on you with a scorpion, for example, uh, when you're um, when you're without ability. By the way, we both, so John, I think it's John and me, we both are in a predicament, low health, and we lost a Nucleon, right? He still has one more Nucleon, but uh, I lost mine. So yeah, I'm jumping into... Um, the the Titan now just for a couple of seconds and I show you I accelerate the gameplay and I show you all I'm doing now is fighting one Aochun with it That's it. So I'm not gonna do any more damage I would have probably done more damage if I had stayed in the in the in the um, Or at the same damage if I had stayed in the uh, Fenrir so I, I have the quantum sensor by the way. This is why I can see the Aochun in stealth. Hawk does his damage. Now that's the end of the match. Nobody's gonna do any more damage. Um, and um, yeah, let's see who did more, right? And then we jump into the next match where my own Fenrir battles my own Hawk. So we have 2.3 million damage. I did more kills than he did. And, uh, but I got less beacons. That's a bit of an anomaly. Normally the Fenrir, who brawls on the beacons, usually gets beacons more than he did. I think he captured the bridge more often. Like a couple of times he captured the bridge. And that's why he got more. Um, but uh, that's a bit of an anom anomaly. But you see the damage is lower on his side. And it's not because he played less less good or whatever. It's, I think, because of the playstyle. The fact that he's, he, he cannot brawl as much as I can. I can walk in the front. See, I was unable to check his profile because he was on iOS. Um, now we're in the second match. Again, my own Fenrir versus my own Hawk this time. But just to get back to the explanation why I think the Hawk just didn't do as bad, uh, as good as the Fenrir is because of the fact that the Hawk needs to stay in a second line. He cannot afford to face brawl the enemy like I do with the Fenrir. He doesn't have the 300,000 health and he doesn't have the 50% resistance or whatever we have here on that or uh, uh, on that on that Fenrir. So he has to stay careful. He has to stay in second line and support and shoot from there and do the best he can to stay alive between his abilities, right? And by the way, look at the targeting system. What a bunch of bull crap. All right? I want to target this guy. The other four people are behind walls. I cannot even shoot them because they're literally behind cover. The only thing that's not behind cover is the one that I target, that I want to target. And he also is under my crosshair. So, first time, I get this guy. First time pressing retarget. Second time, I guess this guy. Third time, I get this guy to the left. Fourth time, I get this guy. And then the fifth target change finally gets me the guy that is exactly under my crosshair. Not only is the target I want to shoot directly on my crosshair, and yet the game gives me every other, despite all the other targets being behind walls. I can't even shoot them, and the targeting system gives me literally all of them before it gives me the only viable target in this situation. Tell me one guy that the targeting system is not absolute trash. Jesus Christ. Seriously. What an absolute nightmare this targeting system is. Tell me what, in, in anyone's right mind, explain to me how the targeting system works. What are the target priorities? How is it not important? Or how does the targeting system not take into account that my weapons cannot shoot through walls and the targets are behind walls? Why does it not reduce their importance in the targeting queue when they are behind cover? And why does it not matter whether or not my crosshair is literally on the guy I'm trying to aim at? Wow, this is so bad! The game is six years old and it can't get the targeting system 
even remotely logical. Seriously, Pixonic, you had years to make this good. And this bad? I mean, seriously, there is no excuse for this screw up on the targeting system. None. Absolutely none. Even if, even if I had... Ugh, I, I'm in a lack of words at this point, I don't know. Anyways, we're here dealing tons of damage and we're face brawling the enemy. I'm Again, here I'm suppressing the enemy Ao Chun before he starts to fly. And then I'm suppressing this uh, scorpion too. And the only reason I survived so long was because they were all suppressed. I had three guys shooting at me. This guy, this Ao Chun with freezing rockets and the scorpion. I think the hawk wasn't yet firing at me. Alright, so this was my performance with uh, Fenrir. Let's jump into my own Hawk. I'm not running Nucleons here. But I have the sniping set up with uh, Dragoons and um, Marques. That's right, it's not Hussar. Um, but um, yeah, I can do some good damage with those. Uh, it's And the most damage I will do once the Overdrive runs. This is when the real damage pops in. And see, I was able to do damage and suppress the enemy Auchun in the distance uh, because I basically had him hit two times as he started flying. That's the interesting thing. Two shots with the Dragoons and the enemy is suppressed with a suppression drone I'm running right here. Um, just if I hit two times with a Dragoon, the enemy is gonna get his, uh, is gonna be suppressed. So that's a quick thing to uh, protect myself too. When somebody brawls me in short range with a Hawk, I can shoot back and often get him suppressed. Wow, this guy has, uh, wow. Dude, I was just getting hit by a Hawk just for a second. Just one second, look. And check. One second over, I activated phase shift and I'm almost... Um, I lost so much health. The good thing is, I lost health. Because I wanted to he lose health due to the overdrive. I want to get the overdrive running, right? So here we go. Overdrive is rocking. Now we can do double damage. Boom! Boom! And only one hit of the Dragoons and the score, uh, the Spectre lost one third of his health. If, if he didn't have phase shift right there, he would have lost that entire Spectre instantly after spawning. Uh oh. Wow, okay, thankfully he wasn't shooting me with those four Vortex. Uh, my Overdrive is, uh, is gone again. Oh, we have a Nightingale. He healed me up. Ah, oh, dang it. I hate it when I'm getting healed past the Overdrive point. Ah, oh, this is so annoying. Could somebody please damage me? I need my Overdrive rocking. You there. You there, Auchon Man. Yes, thank you. That is good. Now I can no longer use lose the overdrive. Now it's on forever. Until I get destroyed, obviously. Boom, boom. Ah, what? There are so many leeches in the enemy team, it's out of control. Ah, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. It's lagging so much that my weapons barely seem to connect right. With this Auchun, at least. Alright, so... These hits with the Dragoons, they really hurt. Again, I couldn't connect with him. He lagged. He literally lagged. Look, he literally lags behind cover. Boop. And he was gone behind cover. Not once I could actually just make clean hits. Anyways, let's use the Hawk flight ability for the first time because this is the first time I actually need it. I use, usually I stay with my Dragoons because they do tons of damage, especially with Overdrive. Um, uh, because I need to keep that Hawk ability for when I really need it. I'm not running the Hawk ability just to do a little bit more damage. I always use the Hawk ability when when the enemy has resistance. That's when I need it, because otherwise I won't do any damage to him, like a, score, a Falcon or a Titans. Then I use the Hawk ability. And secondly, when I'm being attacked, I use the Hawk ability for the resistance, to, so I stop dealing, taking damage, right? Um, so I'm not using it just because, uh, you know, oh, look, I could do maybe t a little bit more damage with a laser. No. Just when the enemy resistance kicks in. And we're going to get into these situations. Titans are going to spawn in very soon. And we're going to do tons of damage to them. There's an Arthur. No need to shoot into his side shield. Not with uh, non-kinetic weapons. That's not even useful. So here we have a hawk, uh, a blitz robot. Did a lot of damage to him and I suppressed him, I think. I'm not getting shot at right now. Now I'm suppressing the enemy Titan. He's suppressed now. And here comes... Uh, the enemy Nodens. I'm getting the Nodens suppressed. Um, and uh, yeah, then I still don't fly. But there's two Titans to the left now. Take a look. There is... Uh, Manny, take a look, please. Yep, there they are. Okay, and this is now I'm gonna start flying. I can also suppress with a laser beam. I'm taking down the first well-leveled Ao Ming. 
with overdrive and I'm doing relatively low amounts of damage, the second titan went down way faster, see this? The second titan is way less leveled, the first titan was incredibly leveled right there. Very, very high level. So let's start to fly, I want to get onto the roof, and I can do that easily by starting to accelerate and fly up like this, doing a ridiculous amount of damage to this titan. And now I'm suppressed by the enemy uh, Nodens. But despite being suppressed, I can still suppress the enemy uh, Blitz Robot right there. And it's interesting that this Nodens always suppresses me. He's also on me now. I got him suppressed. Um, he's always on me. He suppressed me again, which means now I can start to fly. But then I see the Hawk, uh, the, the Blitz Robot. The Blitz Robot was a target I wanted to go for first. Um... Yeah, but then, and then the Nodens was into cover, so, yeah. Uh, that suppression didn't work because I was already suppressed by the Nightingale. To the left is a Nightingale that suppressed me before, and this is why the suppression from the uh, Nodens wouldn't work anymore. But did you see that? The, the Hawk, uh, no, the Nodens has not suppressed anyone else anymore except me. Again, he did it on me. So for the last, like, five suppressions or six, he's gone for me only. He's not gone for anybody else but me. He really considers his me the absolute prime target right here. And I can tell why. Because I did so much damage to him already. So you see 5.3 million damage pretty much if we round it up. Um, that's a lot of damage. I would say we did around 2 million with the Fenrir and two, uh, 3 million uh, or so with the Hawk. In this case the Hawk did more damage and the Fenrir could not have killed these Titans so quickly. Um, you know, because that's not his strength to battle things with resistance. So, um, having the, uh, the Hawk in the later phase of the game is very, very useful. And having the Fenrir in the first phase of the game is more useful than a Hawk. In my opinion, I'm, if I'm making much more success on the battlefield and better performance, if I run the Fenrir in the first situation, not the Hawk in the first, um, because the Fenrir won't work in the second phase with the Titans because his resistance will be get bypassed. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is that the, the Hawk runs better when the enemy runs resistance with Titans and stuff like this, right? So there's two reasons why this happens. So you can't say this is better than this. They're just, they're played at a different time in the battle. Kind of an interesting twist in my opinion, right? So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe as brutal as a man can hit for more. Thanks for bearing with me. You guys are awesome as always. Money signing off. Bye-bye.